In this video, we're going to be discussing an important logic circuit called the half and full adder. Having watched our previous videos, you will already be familiar with how to perform basic binary addition. Let's run through a very quick example to refresh your memory. We will add the deanery or decimal integers 43 to 107 as two 8 bit binary numbers. So we have a 1 and a 1 in the first column. That gives us a 0, and we carry 1 bit. We then have a 1, a 1, and a carry 1, which is 1, carry 1. 0 and 0 and 1 is a 1. 1 and 1 is 0, carry a 1. 0, 0, and the carry 1 is 1. 1 and 1 is 0, and carry a 1. 0 and 1 and a carry 1 is 0, carry a 1. And finally, 0 and 0 and the carry 1 is 1. And so our answer is 1001010. One, zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero. We're now going to look at the actual logic gate circuitry that allows this binary addition to take place. Let's start by considering what combination of logic gates we would need to perform the addition of any single pair of bits. So we need two inputs, and we'll label those A and B. We have produced a sum as one of our outputs, so we're going to label that digit. And we've also produced a carry bit, which we'll then need to feed into the subsequent addition, and we're going to label that C out, carry out. So this truth table covers all the possible combinations for inputs A and B, alongside its two possible output columns, digit and C out. Let's consider the first of the two outputs, digit. We can see that this is the truth table for an XOR gate or an exclusive OR gate. We can see that the output is 1 if only one of the inputs is 1. In all other situations, the output is 0. Let's consider the second of the two outputs, C out. We can see that this is the truth table for an AND gate. We can see that the output is 1 if both the inputs are 1. In all other situations, the output is 0. The logic gate circuit we've created is known as a half adder. A half adder is a building block of the complete circuit required to perform our original calculation. However, if we take another look at the original calculation, we can see a half adder is not the full picture. We also need the ability to accept a third input, and that's the carry bit from any previous addition. So let's call that C in. Now we've got three inputs, A, B, and C in, and two outputs, digit and C out, we end up with the following truth table. We now have an additional input to account for any carry bit from the previous addition, the output of the current addition, and the output of a carry bit from the current addition if one is generated. Here is the logic gate circuit based on the new truth table. It combines two half adders with the addition of an OR gate, and what we're looking at here is known as a full adder. Let's make sure you fully understand how this circuit works. To add A, B, and C in together, we need to start by using the first adder. To add A and B together, which gives us a partial result, which we've labelled x. We then use the second half adder to add the partial result x to c in, and this gives us the output digit. Finally, one or both of the half adders may have generated a carry bit. And if so, this needs to be fed into the next calculation. 
we can simplify this full adder circuit down to an abstracted box diagram as shown at the top there. With A, B and C in being the possible inputs and digit and C out being the possible outputs. Finally, we can now connect multiple full adders together as shown here. When connected like this, N full adders can input the carry bit into a subsequent adder, along with two brand new inputs to add a binary number of N bits together. This process allows us to perform the multi-bit binary addition that we were looking at initially at the start of the video. This is known as a ripple carry adder, although you do not need to know this term for your exam. This is an incredibly useful circuit. Although the design has been highly refined over the years, it still represents the basics of the logic taking place inside the arithmetic logic unit of a computer processor. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What does a simple ALU circuit look like and how does it work?